Good morning, everyone. As usual, welcome to our next session of Math and Matha. Today, our topic is penalties and the Companies Act and LODR. We all always worried what happens if not complied. Penalty, prosecution, impact, what will be the situation? How it will affect my company, my profession, my future, my job. As a KMP, you are also part of this non-compliance. So you are subject to also penalty, prosecution. As a director, you are also part and parcel for that penalty prosecution and as a company. So how th these three people, KMP, directors and the company, of course, there will be someone else also in addition to all of this who will be responsible for compliance will be involved. So in view of that, we are just calling it today Companies Act and LODR only. So what is the penalty and the impact on it, on the respective stakeholder, we are discussing it today. With us, today the Swapne is presenting this presentation. Our own Mr. Bala is always there. And we have our Bautes, which proudly I say X Meta and Meta, is with us. Thanks, Bautes, for your today's time. As you guys know, Mr. Bautis Shah is a member of his ICICI. He completed his Bachelor of Law from Government Law College and went on to Master's in Law. He is a seasoned professor having more than 15 years of experience in the Secretarial Legal Compliance domain. He has been part of transactions like merger, acquisition, open offer, demerger, P funding, SOP, listing. He started journey with Meta and Meta and worked across sectors like manufacturing, logisting. Um, and also for business house like Sula, Kesar, Z Group, is a part of leadership team at Netherwala Group and currently heads the Secretary of Legal Compliance at Netherwala Group. Welcome, Pautes. Thanks a lot for Thank your you, time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, I will request Mr. Bala to give your view on the topic and then Mr. Pautes yourself. Good morning to all of you. I have a great pleasure in welcoming you all for today's uh, session, which is definitely very interesting session. And it is involved day-to-day -day matters of handling the things. Right from the time the company is incorporated till the company runs on the ongoing basis, we are all governed by the company side. When you are governed by the company side, there are a lot of things which we need to comply with what is actually specified, which is actually mandatory. One of the things is secretarial standard. If the secretary standard is not complied with, non-compliance. Appointment of the independent director, appointment of the women director, appointment of the company secretary. If we're not appointed, we end up in the non-compliance. And when we register a company, we are supposed to put a nameplate in the register office with the English and vernacular language and the SIN number, etc. the detail. Even the letter should have the SIN number. There have been cases the companies had the letter has printed without the SIN number. Action has been taken, they have been heavily penalized. Minor things, but ultimately we land up into the problem. If you are actually going through the MCA site in the recent past, you can see there are a lot of uh, show cause notices have been actually issued relating to the register office of the companies, filing of the various resolutions, even for the late issue of the share certificates non-appointment of the company secretary, non-constitution of the audit committee in time, all the things, there are multiple cases you can actually see. When it's come to the penalties, it ranges between minimum to the maximum. In fact, very recently, we have actually seen some of the companies, non-appointment of the company secretary for a period of less than six months, actually. They have been penalized something to the extent of 20 lakh. So really speaking, who's responsible? Because by default, we are known under the company side, company secretary is the officer in default. And if you ask what is our objective? To comply. So we are there to take care of the complaints. If we don't comply, then what happens is we are putting the company into the problem, directors into the problem, company's reputation into the problem. 
So this is the ultimate issue which actually happens because of that. And again, we have the two set of things. One is actually the company sector, the other is the SEBI, LODR regulations. Now the companies are governed with both. Listed companies govern with the LODR in addition to the company side. The companies other than the listed are governed by the company side. There are penalties in both the sections for the same issues. The question comes many times. Oh, which is actually superior? What I know to follow? Because in case of the selected group of companies, the annual general meeting is to be conducted within a period of five months. Whereas, you know, under the company side, annual general meeting, we have a time of six months. Whether six months is superior, five months is there, what is to be bought away, there are two different regulations. That is not the case. Case is, we are governed by the company side because the company has been incorporated under the same company side under the framework of the company. And whereas the listed companies down to the market, they entered the specific listing agreement with them by virtue of that they were committed to follow the terms and conditions of listing. So there are two different things. So ultimately, the both of things has to be complied with. There is no point of discussing whether this or that. That is one. And second thing is law also provides in certain cases, if the compliance is not done, you have a provision for complying the late compliance. I would rather say compliance might have happened by mistake, inadvertently, overlooking, etc. and other thing and all. Okay, no problem. It is better to be late complaint rather than non-complaint. That is one aspect. Second aspect is, if deliberately, if somebody does something intentionally, what you call it, guilty mind, in such cases, the compounding will not arise, it will be straight prosecution. It is something between the civil and the criminal issues. So company secretary has got the great, great responsibility in ensuring the compliance, nothing but compliance throughout, either in the LODR or on the company side, otherwise company stake is in a great problem. Very simple thing, numbering the minutes, not mentioning the same number, not maintaining the register office, not following certain things, everything will like to be lend us into the problem. Today's topic we are, as the team has said, we are actually going to discuss company sector as well as the LODR. LODR is applicable for the listed companies, company sector applicable for all the companies. So what uh, Sopnil is going to take us through, he is going to talk us about the compounding issue and he will also highlight what are the various penalties and things and he will take us the procedure, how do we go with it. One more thing, since we are all professional, we know we are required to write the board report. When you are writing the board report, naturally the non-compliance of there, it is going to be highlighted by the statutory auditor, secretarial auditor, all these people they will say. So naturally, in the board report, we have to also bring out what are the issues. We have to also address, make the comments for the observation which are made by these auditors. And annual return disclosure will be there. It is required to be published in the financial statement. Anybody, including the investor who is receiving the financial statement, will have occasion to go through and see the companies. So naturally, company reputation gets filed ultimately in the end. The short point is company secretary has to ensure absolute compliance. That is first and foremost. If the compliance by mistake is not done, they should ensure to the late compliance at least to safeguard to greater extent that is there. And finally, there are certain issues where you can definitely go for the condemnation of delay, but those cases are only very less. Wherever is possible, that can be done. The best thing is Complain. That's all I would say like that. So now I'll ask the panelists to share his views on the topic before we start. Over to Mr. Shah. Thank you. Thank you, Bala, sir. Uh, thank you once again for moderating this session. It's always been good to hear you. You're always energetic and uh, a knowledge uh, powerhouse, basically, I must say. Uh, good morning to all. Good, good morning to the panelists and the participants joining in today. Uh, thanks for joining in at this early morning hour on this hot topic. Uh, I, would, I would always uh, like to say that though uh, the topic seems to be a, a, a bit light, uh, basically you have certain uh, penalties prescribed under the various sections which have been clearly given, but uh, there are certain roles and responsibilities a company secretary should always take into mind basically while doing a certain work basically. So uh, a thoroughness of the subject, basically, if you're working for, example, say a listed entity, 
uh, uh, the, the, the radical changes which have been brought in by SEBI in day to day, this thing, the timelines have been cut down. You have you need to adhere to the timelines. Certain disclosures need to be properly made under Regulation 30. Uh, what what sort of uh, 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 quarterly disclosures you are uh, filing into? So basically, the the company secretary needs to be more vigilant per se. Uh, he needs to be abreast with the update, updated knowledge on the subject. Uh, I, for the advice of the fresher company secretaries, I would always request that he may always approach or be guided by some senior company secretaries or the best would be a practicing company secretary who basically acts as a sarthi because he is the one who is going to audit his books at the end of the year, uh, take him into confidence basically and find a way out of the solution, how things can be managed or things can be worked out. Uh, so basically it's a, a, a brief overview of how you handle the situation. Also, uh, a bit off the topic, uh, we have secretarial audits being conducted by practicing company secretaries in this uh, in a listed entity. Uh, they usually go by various laws which the company uh, adheres to at the year end. So basically, we have for a manufacturing company, say we have a air pollution uh, act or water pollution or factories act, industrial dispute acts. So uh, not limiting to the size of the knowledge the company sec secretary should focus on. I would always prefer that you should always have a, 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 a knowledge of each and every sect of act, basically, which would be very, very beneficial. And you would be able to uh, 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 mitigate that particular risk or that penalty at the very moment. Uh, and I think you, if, it would be better if you have a, a quarterly review of the compliances, which you usually have, uh, so as to uh, get a fair knowledge of what exactly uh, your risks are, what exactly your penalties, which might get inflicted, uh, if not, uh, just to share a, 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 a adjudication um, uh, order just uh, a couple of months back. Uh, it was an adjudication order under uh, uh, the uh, the director who's, a, a, who's an ex-founder of a, a very big uh, giant retail chain uh, and is now had uh, uh, opened up a finance company, a startup finance company. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, I can say the name on the you know this uh, very uh, uh, this very webinar, uh, but uh, just to give you a brief... in a public weekend. Okay, okay. So I'm just referring to the case of Mr. Ex uh, founder of Flipkart, Mr. Sachin Pansil. Uh, he had a financial startup basically. Uh, so he made his company basically, and the company secretaries uh, were given the charge to appoint him as a managing director uh, since he was the uh, the 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 the, uh, the the face of the company so basically uh, the, the the basically the, the role of the company secretary is to jot down a whole list of, uh, of of checklist of the points which needs to be adhered to and and meticulously see that nothing is left out uh, what what uh, uh, mistake uh, per se happened in that case per se was uh, they made him a managing director in the board meeting, but they for, they forgot to co-opt co him as an additional director. So my advice to all the company secretary basically who are uh, making uh, a director first time on the board to co-opt him as an additional director first and then as a managing director. Uh, so luckily what happened in this case, when the AGM happened, uh, they, they appointed him as a managing director, but he was not an additional director regularized. Uh, when it came to the knowledge uh, of the of the company, they at the very moment uh, made a uh, DI, filed a DR12, uh, cessing is uh, him from the office of a director from the way. Very AGM. So a penalty was in small things usually uh, turn up uh, to a, a big thing at uh, at a later stage. Uh, so, uh, uh, with this, I would always pitch in uh, when Swapnil gives the presentation as and when my thoughts come in. And thank you, Dipti Ma'am, for uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, to share my knowledge and uh, 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 give my insights on uh, the penalties on Companies Act and LODR. Uh, thank you once again to all the participants for a patient hearing. And I request uh, Swapnil to uh, carry forward the pre presentation. The same issue, you, what you said actually, non appointed to the additional director, directly appointing the managing director. Very recently, there was a case law in Bangalore where company has been fined 3 lakh rupees, company secretary has been fined 3 lakh rupees, and the CFO has been fined 2 lakh rupees, other directors have been fined 1 lakh rupees. The justification has been told actually, company secretary knows that he should know the law. Since he knowing the law, he did not follow, he was living the higher amount. 
that is since it's an expert of the field and the another thing is all these penalties what we are talking about is all penalties has to be paid from his own pocket company cannot pay the penalties on his behalf that is another thing people have to keep in mind this because many time they personally check whether it has come from your personal banking account money has been paid that is also there so don't think if the penalty is there company will pay i have no responsibility nothing is going to happen and this director always check why i should pay from my pocket that no that is the reason why the companies are now taking the director and uh, officer yeah, liability no, insurance in fact very recently law yeah. also come out it is necessary to take the dno license etc which is actually catching up now yeah, yeah. yeah yes sir. so sopnil you can start participant in yeah, you can put on a chat box your questions please thank you thank you sir good morning all i am sopnil bosli from maitan maita presenting today's topic related to penalties under companies act 2030 and fines under sebi lodr i would like to share a ppt so today's topic is penalties so before discussing penalty i would like to check fine and penalty there is a some difference fine is the sum of law or sorry court of law or other authority or penalty is imposed by the appropriate authority when person breaches the law means there is a for a fine we should approach to the court for a uh, for a, a fine or a penalty uh, in a penalty authority should uh, give a penalty that is way okay uh, we should know the meaning of penalty a penalty is a punishment or consequences for doing something wrong means the person who doing a wrong against the law he will be punishable it is called as a penalty punishment or usual punishment for doing something which is against the law is a punishment uh, penal penalty is also type of punishment for breaking an agreement or not following rules amount of punish, punishment that is pay for failing of a rule of the law there are different kind of punishment Uh, first uh, is a deterrent theory in a deterrent theory means punishment hold that which is institution for a criminal punishment is morally justified because it serves to deter crime the second is retributive theory in retributive theory when an offender breaks the law justice required that they suffer in a return and that the response to crime is ever proportional to the offense uh, third is preventive theory in a preventive theory uh, punishment is six to prevent prospective crime by disabling the criminals in reformative theory considers a punishment to be a curative more than the more than to be a deterrent and in expiatory theory compensation is awarded to the victim from the wrongdoer there is some difference uh, before i start this uh, compound level offense and non compound level offense for going to the compounding offense firstly uh, as a balasar Uh, told earlier that for compounding offence, firstly we uh, non-compliance should be compliant. Then go for the compounding. Without a compliance of the non-compliant, uh, uh, compounding should not be started. Uh, so there is a difference in the compounding level offence. There is a complainant who is a victim who is agreed for compromise or to have a charge drop against the accused, and. Uh, in a compounding is essential to compromise or arrangement between administrator and a person committing an offence. Uh, next one is compound level offence, which is less serious. So in a compound level offence, it is not as serious uh, as well as in a as well as compound level offence as compared to a compound level offence. Uh, impact only to the private person. And in a non-compound level offence, the offences which cannot be compounded only be this offense has only be squash the nature of offense is so grave and criminal uh, uh, no compromise or arrangement is allowed under in non compounding where investigation has been initiated or is pending and the nature is serious nature of compoundable offense and the non compoundable offense both on a private person as well as society at large and so uh, in case of uh that uh, prior approval 
if the approval is not obtained now if that cannot be prior approval so it will be kind of a situation in that scenario how we handle a panel suppose the offense is or i think we can take letter where prior approval is there sorry you carry on oh, there is a benefit of compounding uh, after the compounding the offender will take a peace of mind for the compounding offense he will not bother for the offenses uh, there is a one nature that is the speedy disposal of offenses and justice and judiciary can devote more time to concentrate on serious cases compounding provision under companies act 2013 the this provision is coming under section 441 of companies act which is deals with the certain offenses not be standing anything contained in the code or a crpc so we'll just go back to one slide back yes sir you are saying here speedy disposal of offenses and justice yes sir any idea how speedy the things are all disposed of so far nclt it is not but otherwise at least yeah because the speedy again you know it is a question of variance it depends upon from the place to place some of the places yes in the reasonable time some of the places i don't know what is the reason but uh, things are not attended to it is just lying there the speedy disposal is actually definitely a possible in number of cases we need to actually go visit follow up make the things and all those things which is also there so ultimately the non compliance not only results the filing a copy account but wasting the time and energy and spending enough things which is happening instead of concentrating the business we are actually on the litigation and the tension the, the yeah. positive energy in to be applied in positive in become applied in all that non productive activity correct that's right uh, as we discuss as uh, say uh, section 1 one minute uh, this person has asked a question which mr bala has uh, mr dilip has asked he asked that uh, and it is answered in the chat box for compounding it is uh, and condonation is at least uh, he has also asked the question how much government taking time to order whether they provide penalty amount in order or chalan fees of cg1 is sufficient yeah. in fact of the in fact of the condonation normally i think uh, we have done some condonation when i was working it has come between 60 days to 75 days the condonation has actually taken place and in case of the condonation there is no penalty condonation you have to always pay the additional fees because when you make a application of the condonation i think initially 10000 rupees is the money which used to be paid along with the condonation for application fee when you are filing a cg1 form additional fine let me which you have to say you can file the form in this particular case in the mgt coding so if they have the justification if they have the reason to believe if they have done something beyond their control etc another lenient view might be taken so they not to make application they will get it in about two to on a half month time they will be able to get the order then they will be able to file the what is your experience on the subject uh, yeah basically i think uh, what nikhare ji said uh, Uh, usually people are in a dilemma should i step in and uh, go in front of them and it won't be a situation like aap bel mujhe maar or should we wait for the ministry, ministry to come back and issue a circular basically my thought would be pretty clear on that basically uh, the intent basically of the party needs to be properly looked into i think uh, the suo moto application per se by the party is what the adjudication officer will also take into consideration so he would also see the merits basically that you have come in with clear hands with a clear intent and uh, it would also have an impact on the reduction the penalty to a certain extent rather than the ministry giving you a letter yeah. and you then explaining him vice versa the case so nikhil ji i think that answers your query yeah and again one thing when the uh, so far notice is issued and then you do compounding again it may tend to amount if any issue prosecution and all that why you should do that rather than go yourself because otherwise also it will come to the and now today's online world please understand nothing will be hidden earlier it was all physical so it was not in the eye now the slightest non compliance it so cause notice will be issued so be alert 
and that's why this MCA is working like heavily. Now these people will not do any execution work, only supervision and issue SOPAS notice only one after the other. So one has to be True. very clear with the compliances and better go in yourself only rather than waiting. Whether penalty imposed by BSC has to be mentioned in MGT 7. Yes, yes, very true. It has to be mentioned. In fact, your, your, your practicing company secretary would also qualify in his various reports which he's been giving. And in fact, uh, the action which is being taken on that very uh, thing also needs to be disclosed subsequently. So yes, it would form part of uh, the necessary Yeah. Disclosures. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Sapni, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so Sapni, you have Compounding of offense under CB Act, limiting the role of CB. Section 24A of CB Act 1992 provides for the compounding of composition of certain offenses, which is compounded by security appellate tribunal or any court of law where the said proceeding are pending. As earlier, Balasar uh, uh, told that the disclosure requirement and consequent to compounding of offense. Every company should disclose the statement of compounding of offense in a board report, not only disclosure, but also comment on the observation made by, made by the statutory auditor and secretary auditor required. Second, secretary auditor should disclose statement of compounding of offense if applicable. Listed company should include statement of compounding of offense in corporate governance report. Statutory auditor should point out compounding of offense in audit report and also make comment. And the disclosure requirement and requirement after compounding of offense in annual return should be disclosure of offense under section 92.3 of Companies Act and Rule 12 of Companies Management and Administration, which is impacted on companies' reputation and goodwill. There are the authorities who are compounding the offenses. There are two authorities, which is a regional director and tribunal. The regional director appointed by the central government as the regional director for the purpose of this, where maximum amount of fine which may be imposed by the offense does not exceed rupees 25 lakhs. And in a tribunal, the tribunal is a national company law tribunal, it authorized to compound all other cases. There is a maximum amount of fine or fine which is payable for alleged violation of particular section of the act. There are a procedure for compounding. For firstly, uh, board should a board meeting should be called for for decide decide on compounding as per the company's act. And secondly, grant consent means to give authority to person who who can who can present before the authority for compounding. Third is the resolution. After the holding a board meeting, the uh, in a board meeting passes resolution to compound and provide for a preparation and providing necessary authorization, authorization for a compounding. And there is a personal hearing. There is a personal hearing before the RDR tribunal who decides the amount to, for a compounding, then order. Then order to get, get the order passed by the regional director or tribunal and pay the amount in a stipulated time. And then a filing, filing order of regional director and NCLT with the ROC form in form INC 28 and ROC will take note of the same. Yeah, before start of uh, penalties under companies act, I should clarify that the officer in default should pay the penalty out of his pocket. The company is not liable to pay the uh, penalty for officer in default. So there is a list for comprehensive comprehensive list for the penalties. There is in a section 12, which is speak about the register of office of a company. If a company default in this particular section, there is a penalty of rupees 1000 for every day during which the default continues, but not exceeding rupees one leg. In this case, both the companies and officer, officer in default are penalized. As as per the company's amendment ordinance in 2018, this is the recategories to fine to penalties. Uh, some penalties are earlier are in a fine as a fine, but which may be reclassified by the, this ordinance uh, shall be 
is uh, converted into penalty. So, section 15. Did you speak about the alteration of member? Just to, just to add in, uh, just to add in a bit, something out here. Basically, section 12 is most mostly the favorites of. Uh, uh, the MCA, they usually says and there have been uh, ample of orders basically from ROC Bangalore or ROC Delhi, Noida, basically for, for small, small reasons, basically. So basically uh, the company secretary needs to be very vigilant per se with his letterheads, with his communications, with his placards on the outside of the registered office of say factories. So uh, basically just if you see a couple of scenarios, the sin was not mentioned in INC 24, the, uh, the matter went and uh, they had to pay a penalty. Uh, the address of the company was wrongly mentioned. The IPF had sent notices to uh, the nodal officer, uh, that is the company secretary, and it got returned back saying that there is no such address. So, the, again, that nodal officer and the company was penalized. So, these all small things give in afterwards. So, it's basically good for the company secretary to re relook at his house properly and give a watertight uh, filings to the uh, ministry so that we don't have any lacuna basically in the process. Also, sometimes what happens, you have so many companies in the group and the operator at the entrance do not know the name. I think what. Shopping may carry on. <laughs> and uh, when then this kind of courier and, and comes post, then the operator may reject, no, no, this is not our company. So please, no. your front desk should also know the which all are your company because the communication comes, then they will reject and the unnecessary problem will to be created. Okay, so please, go ahead. Yeah. Section 15, speak about that alteration of memorandum and articles to be noted in every copy. If alteration made in the memorandum or article of the company is not noted in every copy, there is a penalty which is rupees 1000 for every copy of the memorandum or article issue. Company and officer in default both are penalized under this section. Section 26 speaks about the matters to be stated in a prospectus. If a public company default in the provision of issue of prospectus, then both company and officer in default is penalized as follows. In the case of a company, rupees 50,000, which is extend to rupees 3 lakh. In the case of officer, that is every person who is knowingly a party to the issue of such prospectus, then there is a fine not less than 50,000, which may extend to rupees 3 lakh. Subnil, one minute. Huh? In this alteration case, if alteration made in the memorandum, this is a very common mistake. And, you know, uh, up till now what happens that uh, fine, if goes out to your client or kind of thing, it is okay. Or banks, they do not create fuss. But many times, this article was only submitted. So, because these articles are printed quite back, and as in when you update, you have to update this. So, so far possible, this memorandum article should be under the control of secretarial department only. So that it does not be given without amendment outside. Again, as a secretary, you have to take care that all amendments are taken care in all copies. Suppose you don't want to do because what happens, minimum copies you have to print. And everyone is upset that is idle. Now, so if in group company, there are many group companies. So, so many memorandum articles. Now you make little, little amendment. Where in 100 copies you will do it? So what you will do? You commit, uh, change, submit, finish. The other copies is not changed. And if sometime is required, you are giving. So far it goes outside. It is otherwise also wrong if it goes to the banks and all that because then there may be important thing which is not gone inside. And third thing, if by mistake it goes to any regulator, then it is a problem. I'll say these mistakes happen many times, but since it has not gone to the MCA office, it is not getting caught. There will be so many amendments in that memorandum article which may be missed and it is already submitted. This is a very common mistake will happen. So this should be taken care of all copies. So keep 10 copies only where all amendments will happen, balance copy in lock and key sealed. So no one give outside. This should be taken care. Practically, I was taking care that way. Thanks. Section 42 speaks about the offer or invitation for subscription of securities on a private placement. If a company or a director or a promoter has not followed the provision of the private placement, there is a penalty for both company and officer in default. 
penalty the amount involved in the offer or invitation or which stock or whichever is higher and company should refund all the monies to the subscriber within 30 days of order imposing the penalty in a section 53 prohibition on issue yeah, just to add uh, just to add a small thing out here on section 42 uh, uh, there was another recent order uh, uh, from roc mumbai a uh, couple of months back a very interesting order on one of the uh, biggest uh, wealth management company basically uh, i would name it as anand rati who just recently went for an ipo uh, basically uh, uh, the whole process went through they had issued certain shares on rights basis uh, but but somewhere the company secretary or say some other officer uh, did not read the line or i don't know it was uh, done uh, without intention or with intention uh, the right the, the line also reads that whenever you you have any money coming in the, the any preferential issue or rights issue a dedicated a dedicated account a separate account needs to be maintained into and the proceeds needs to be uh, uh, may, uh, be uh, parked in that particular account Uh, the the mistake by the company wherein went so much to and said that we haven't maintained a separate account per se for this particular transaction uh, the, the the adjudicating officer basically so all these small things of not having a bank account wherein the proceeds also needs to be uh, 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 parked also i think needs to be looked into very seriously yes sir please yeah section 53 speaks about the prohibition on issue of share at discount if a company issues share at discount in case of a company there should be refund all the monies with interest at the rate of 12% per annum from the date of issue of such shares to the person to whom such shares have been issued and in case of officer penalty which may extend to an amount equal to the amount raised through the issue of shares at discount in rupees 5 lakhs whichever is less there is a both company and officer in default are penalized under this section or section 60 publication of authorized subscribe and trade up capital uh, if company advertise its authorized capital on a company's letter read or business head uh, there are company and officer in default both are penalized in case of a company penalty of rupees 10000 and in case of officer in default penalty of rupees 5000 for each default there is mention for each default it is so here i think it is said that is authorized then you have to add paid up you can write but you have to use that authorize and paid up together like right? that is the thing no yes, and if you don't know then there is non compliance no yeah it's not only that advertise in the sense if they write authorize then they should be always also doing the pipit uh, uh, paid up capital also yes. so that, that it indicates though authorize is this much paid up is this much i think that is the thing right yes okay so okay. okay. section 46 speaks about notice to given to registrar for alteration of share capital if company fails to send notice to registrar after alteration of share capital there is a penalty for both company and officer in default penalty of rupees 500 for each day during which such default continued subject to the maximum of rupees 5 lakhs in a case of a company and rupees 1 lakh in a case of officer in default section 91 speaks about power to close register of members or debenture holders or other security holders if register of members is closed without giving such a notice or any shorter notice they are both penalized their company and officer in default are penalized the penalty of rupees 5000 for every day subject to the maximum of rupees 1 lakh uh, section 74 speaks about repayment of deposit or etc accepted before the commencement of this act in this case both company and officer in default are penalized in case of a company in addition to the payment of the amount of deposit or part thereof and the interest due fine not be less than rupees 1 crore which may extend to rupees 10 crore and in case of officer imprisonment which may extend to 7 year or fine shall not be less than 25 lakhs which may be extend to 2 crores or both in this section imprisonment is a inserted for this specific section or related to the repayment of deposit section 86 speaks about punishment for contravention of provision of charges if a company uh, fails to if company contravenes the provision of charges the company and also officer in default are penalized 
in the case of a company penalty of rupees 5 lakhs and in the case of officer in default uh, the penalty of rupees 50000 so this uh, so we go back to the contravention provisions of charges so any any provision suppose they give wrong information they give file date or anything everything it is one and the same right okay because when we say the provisions of charges in charges there are so many sections subsections rules regulation so anything you not comply same penalty you are yeah, you're right Titi. anything and everything will get covered under the charges yeah it what not, happens not, yeah. yeah understanding is that if i don't file charge late this will happen but there are many things in that charges which is required the process if you skip any process also the same penalty will be correct you're right thank you section 92 speaks about the annual return if a company fails to file a copy of annual return within a prescribed period there is both company and officer in default are penalized under this section in a case of a company penalty of rupees 10000 but, but and in a case of continuing failure with a further penalty of rupees 1000 for each day during which such failure continue which may extend to rupees 2 lakhs and in case of officer in default penalty not be less than rupees 10000 but which may extend to rupees 50000 section 94 speaks about space of place of keeping and, and annual system. return impact non filing you are covered in the earlier uh, that next slide okay. uh, there is a only uh, information about that okay uh, a specific section okay okay then we'll discuss that then. thanks yeah section 94 speaks about place of keeping and inspection of register returns and etc if a company refuses to give a copy of register or to take a exact Extract thereof. There is both company and officer in default is penalized. The penalty is rupees 1000 for every day if default continues, which is subject to maximum rupees 1 lakh. Under section 99, punishment for default in complying with provision of section 96 to 98, which is related to annual general meeting. If a company default in this section or holding a meeting, there is both company and officer in default are penalized. There is a fine which may extend to rupees 1 lakh and in case of continuing default with a further fine, this may extend to rupees 5,000 for every day. Okay, so one minute, go to section 92. There is a comment by Ms. Aditi that with regards to section 92, even though the extension is given for filing, the penalty is charged from the due date onwards. This to be given. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Ms. Aditi. Section 1, statement to be annexed to notice. If a default is made under this section, then company, there is a specific penalty for every promoter, director, manager, or other KMP. Uh, company is excluding from this section a penalty which may extend to rupees 50,000 or five times the amount of benefit accruing to the promoter, director, manager, or other KMP, or any of this relative, whichever is more. In this section, uh, specifically mention that promoter, director, manager, and other KMP. So, next section is section 105 speaks about the proxy. If any officer fails to annex a statement along with a notice with regard to proxy, there is a penalty for the officer in default, which penalty of rupees 5000. Section 111 circulation of members resolution. If company and its officer violate the provision in regard to the circulation of members resolution. There is a penalty for both company as well as officer in default. The penalty of rupees 25,000. Uh, section 117 speaks about the resolution and agreement to be filed. If a company fails to file resolution or agreement in a time prescribed, both company and officer in default are penalized. In a case of company, there is a penalty of rupees 10,000. In a case of continuing failure, rupees 100 per day subject to a maximum of rupees 2 lakh. In a case of every officer, including liquidator, in this section, liquidator also include for a penalty, there is a penalty not be less than rupees 10,000. In the case of continuing failure, rupees 100 day per day subject to the maximum of rupees 50,000. Oh, there is too much. This why specifically added because when you do voluntary liquidation, 
that resolution required to be filed and the voluntary liquidator get appointed the moment the resolution is passed. So then he has to take care to resolution. This form should be filed in MGT 4. MGT 14, sorry. MGT 14. Topril, there is a question has come actually in the chat box. Yes, sir. Whether the filing of any e form, say, after a period of one, two years with a late filing fee as prescribed, whether it would amount to offense and would qualify for compound First of all, I don't think whether after one or two years you can file the form, isn't it? Because earlier the 300 days was there, which was actually done away with. Yes. New amendment act. Yes. So the question is, the late filing will arise only when it is permitted. When it is not there, I think people have to go for the compounding of the offences. Then that is possible. If the compounding of the offences is not possible, then you have to go for the compounding of the offence only. Condonation, if possible, you can explore. Correct, na? Okay. Yeah. You? Yeah, Balasar, I think he is rightly picked up that point perfectly. True. Sure. But you can't do compounding without uh, making good the uh, mistake you have done. So you no, no, to... because there are certain cases where you cannot do the things. That you have to explain. Because, for example, if you are supposed to hold the annual general meeting before 30th of September, if the date is already gone and you are filing it, you can't rectify it. In such cases, it is not. But because what no, but here it is e-form. Yeah. Huh? yeah, here e-form, then you cannot find the e-form unless until... Uh, this thing where this is not possible. Either you have to go for the condemnation by the form, otherwise you have to tell them this is what it has happened. We could not find it, so the date is already gone. We have to seek for the compound. Yeah, because see the non-compliance has to be rectified wherever it is possible. Only it is possible. Otherwise, it is because there are two issues. One is what you call the continuing offence. Now, what happens? The company secretary is not appointed. The Fine is the penalty is calculated from the time the default has happened till the time company secretary is appointed. So, in which case, necessarily after the appointment of the company secretary only, you can actually go for the compound. That is the issue here. So, wherever such cases are there, you need to comply with it. There it is absolutely not compliable. Then, in case you can't help it, you have to explain that. There is a question whether government will come for CFSS scheme 2022. For non filing of forms, any idea? We say we don't have idea, boss. Okay. <laughs> what Gawan will do? Actually? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, no further. Yeah, yeah. Section 135 speaks about corporate social responsibility. If a company is in default in complying with the provision of the such provision of this section, subsection 5 and 6. In a, uh, there is a penalty for both company and officer in default. In a case of company, there is a penalty twice the amount required to be transferred to by the company to the fund specified in the Schedule 7 or the unspent CSR amount or unspent CSR account, as the case may be, or rupees 1 crore, whichever is less. In a case of officer, the penalty of one tenth of the amount required to transfer or 2 lakh, whichever is less. This, this is a really big penalty and one has to see for which subsection. It is subsection 5 or subsection 6. So if there is non-compliance, you have to carry out that. Now, honestly analyzing that whether this is compoundable, whether first you have to check that whether there is a penalty. And that's why I specifically pointed out that non-compliance of the provisions of entire section, then anything in that section, you are uh, responsible to penalty. But if the section is very specific, if you say 172, where they say that contravene any provisions of appointment and qualification, other than that, we can say that there is no penalty. So anything relevant to that, or if there is subsection like this, which is mentioned subsection 5 and 6. So one has to be very careful and analyze that whether first the penalty is applicable or not. And then you take further action. Still, you can find out some way. This is the clue I'm telling. Okay. Thank you. Please go ahead. In, in, in case of 135, I think it is taking a big leap nowadays. And specifically, there are various... Sir, you are uh, connected. Uh, what is the amount of 2%? Have you contributed? When you have contributed? All the things are all nowadays actually happening. 
Yeah. I think this is the next section 12, the favorite section which is going to come up. Uh, I think uh, they've already started for collating the information in form CSR2, which was annexed with that AOC4 form. So basically one practical difficulty if you just uh, happen to look into, you basically the balance sheets are made in rupees and thousands or rupees and lakhs. Uh, when, when you enter these amounts in your form, it usually asks in rupees. So sometimes, uh, God forbid, uh, when you have calculated that PBT on that rupees and thousands of rupees and lakhs, which may differ in that value in rupees, and it may give you a shortfall, which may then tend amount to a penalty as well. So you need to be extra cautious, ask your uh, accounts department to give a thorough picture of in rupees, so that you uh, pay pay up ending more than what is actually being, uh, what is the obligation. Because one tenth is also going to come from your pocket in case that penalty happens. So I think uh, a very close eye needs to be looked into in section 135. Also, uh, the, the proposals which are tabled before the board also needs to be thoroughly looked into. Basically from the ATA pers ATG perspective, 12A perspective, whether there's an implementing agency, then that registration number of that implementing ag agency, whether schedule seven, it falls under that particular head basically giving freebies to employees and other stuff which companies usually had been doing or some companies may, may be doing. So all these things need to be closely monitored and then properly filtered into this 135. You rightly pointed out Gokesh because I got questions from many friends that Dipti Ali who balance sheet lakh mein banaya tha, humne calculate kiya. Are ya, itna karod diya, few thousand reh gaya abhi, kya kare usko? It's happened really, it is uh, this way to many companies and they receive so called notice and they were subject to penalty. So you rightly pointed out, you have to give exact, take exact figure because if you round it off and take it uh, in some lakhs and three, four digit only you take it, then there will be mistake in calculation of CSR. So please take entire amount and then only calculate. Very correct point you pointed. Thanks. And should I go ahead? Yeah. Oh, section 178. Uh, Mr. Bala, there is a query. Uh, Mr. Vinitra said, referring to previous explanation given for what qualify for compounding, can we conclude that for an e-form file with late filing fee, then no need for go for compounding? Yeah, absolutely right. Because if you have filed the EFA with the late fee, you already made the delayed compliance already. There is no non-compliance exists actually. Because you have filed the form lately, for that you have paid the late fees, which is actually permissible. So there is no question of any non-compliance is there. There is no need to go for computing on this matter. Uh, Bala sir, uh, can I add something here? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, yes. uh, so sir, uh, some are the sections uh, which says that irrespective of paying the additional penalty, yeah. uh, say for section 92 or 137, then also uh, adjudication uh, or any penalty may be imposed by the ROC for uh, paying the additional yeah. fees by filing the form. I was coming to that point only. Uh, I will, I have my understanding differing. If you are delaying the filing, that means you have not filed within timeline. That is your non compliance per se. Act says you have to file in 30 days. You are not filed in 30 days, so non compliance. But what was happening that people will not file. So they are allowing you to file with additional fee. That do not make good. The non compliance already occurred. Is no, no, that is, no, that is true. What you are saying is absolutely correct because see what happens is uh, if the late fee is paid and the compliance is done, it is not the non compliance, but it is a late fee. Practically, no one asks, so that it goes on. But yeah. if you ask technically, so, it is none. Yeah, technically, what you are saying is correct. The period in which you are not filed, you remain non compliant, you have made it good only at the end. But the question here pertinently, whether to go for the compounding or things like that, I think to the best of my knowledge, I can put it that way only. If anybody has got a better knowledge than me, they can share with me. To the best of knowledge, once the delayed form is filed, then nobody actually comes back on this matter. That is what my experience is. Yes, that is the case. But yes, as rightly mentioned, 
they have rightly actually it is non compliance and the ministry yeah, you're right. that, not, that is uh, a, yeah. asking yeah. or following that is, for that type of thing that is practical yeah. If any shrewd ROC is there, he would still wants to take it. They can take you for a ride. Yes, during this period, you have not filed it. So, why not uh, we levy a penalty? That could happen, possibility, but practically it is not happening today because once the non compliance is made by the delayed compliance, then people forget about it. Could I have a further? Yeah. Uh, section 172 speaks about punishment for contravention of provision of chapter 11, appointment and qualification of director. If company contravenes any of the provision of the appointment and disqualification, sorry, qualification of a director for which no penalty is prescribed, there is both company and officer in default are penalized. Then in case of company and officer in default, penalty of proof is 50,000, but which may extend to, in a case of continuing failure, Rupees 500 for each day during which such failure continue, uh, which subject to maximum 3 lakh rupees in a case of company and rupees 1 lakh in a case of officer who is in default. Section 173 speaks about meeting of board. If an officer fails to give a notice under this section, there is a penalty for officer in default, not for a company. In a case of officer, penalty of rupees 25,000. Uh, under section 186 speaks about loan and investment by the company. If a company contravenes the provision of intercorporate loan and investment, both are, both are penalized, company and officer in default. In the case of company, there is a fine, not less than rupees 25,000, but which may extend to rupees 5 lakhs. In the case of officer, there is a provision of imprisonment for a term which may extend to two years and a fine not be less than rupees 25,000, but which may extend to rupees 1 lakh. In section 119. Uh, just a word of caution on that 186. If you read the other sections, probably the penalties on the other sections, it, it is always penalty or, or imprisonment. This is the only section wherein you say it's an imprisonment and a penalty. So I think uh, giving of loans, uh, ICDs also needs to be thoroughly checked in with your uh, in in consonance with your accounts team so that we don't face any uh, issues in this part per se when the promoters are funding certain other entities in, in your group companies yes, should i go further yeah please section 119 speaks about inspection of minute books of a general meeting if a company refuses for inspection or to take a copy of minutes of a general meeting both are penalized. Company and officer in default are penalized. In the case of a company, penalty of rupees 25,000. And in the case of officer, penalty of rupees 5,000. Section 118, which is speak about related party transaction. If any director or any other employee of a company who had entered into or authorized the contract or arrangement in violation of the provision of related party transaction, there is a specifically mentioned that only officer in default are penalized. Not a company is not a penalized. Company is not a penalized. In the case listed company, the penalty of rupees 25 lakhs. In the case of other company, the penalty of rupees 5 lakhs. Section 189 speaks about register of contract or arrangement in which director are interested. If a company fails to maintain register of contract or arrangement in which directors are interested, as defined under section 184 or section 188 applies. There is only officer in default is penalized. For every director who is in a default shall be liable to a penalty of rupees 25,000. Uh, section 203, which speak about the appointment of KMT, company secretary also covered under this section. If a company does not follow the provision of key manager and personnel, okay, there is a penalty for a company and officer in default for both. In the case of a company, penalty of rupees 5 lakhs. In the case of every director and key managerial personnel, penalty of rupees 50,000 and where the contravention is uh, continuing, further fine, which may extend to rupees 1,000 for every day after the first during which the contravention continues, but not exceeding rupees 5 lakhs. Section 204 speaks so, about. So, Pranil, there is yes, one question is there in the chat box. As per section 454, 
late filing of the all form beyond the time limit with addition fees is a non compliant except for annual filing form aoc4 mgt7 mgt7 a that is what the section is then then it says that also implies unless you go for compounding your sword is hanging on you Yes, it is hanging on, and it is going to be vigilant. As I mentioned, now it's online, so they will issue so far so this like anything. Yeah, but uh, yes, you are right. Actually, as I said also earlier, yes, the non-compliance is there for the period till the late compliance is done. That is a fact. But as I mentioned, only my personal experiences. Nobody is taking the action. But the fact yeah, remains. Fact know, remains. Yes. Fact remains. There is a possibility. You may get a adjudication. Order also, but here the concerned person take a call whether Sue Boto he wants to go for the compound, close a chapter, or wait for anything happens and watch, and maybe nobody takes an action. That call nobody can advise. That you have to take yourself depending upon the circumstances. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, sir. Section two zero four speaks about secretarial audit for bigger company. If a company fails to attach secretarial audit report to board's report in a prescribed form. Uh, company and also officer and department are penalized in this section. In the case of officer and company, penalty of rupees two lakh. I mentioned. Section two zero six speaks about power to call for information, inspection of books and contract. Sorry, conduct inquiries. If a company fails to furnish any information or explanation or produce any document to the register. In the case of officer and company, both are. Penalized under this section, fine may extend to rupees one lakh. And in the case of continuing failure, with an addition fine, additional fine which may extend to rupees five lakh. Sorry, five hundred for every day after the first day, first during which the failure continues. Section two zero seven speaks about conduct inspection and inquiries. If any officer disobey the direction issued by the registrar or the inspector, there is a provision for Penalty for officer in default. There is imprisonment which may extend to one year and fine rupees twenty five thousand, but which may extend to rupees one lakh. Section four zero five speaks about power of central government to direct companies to furnish information on statistics. If a company or any officer in default contravenes this section or provision of this act, there is a punishment provided both for both company as well as for officer in default. In a case of company. An officer of company penalty of rupees twenty thousand. In a case of continuing failure with the further penalty of rupees one thousand for each day, which may extend to rupees three lakhs. Section four four seven speaks about punishment for a fraud. Uh, in related to that, fraud means fraud includes any act of omission, concealment of any fact with intent to deceive or to gain undue. Advantage or wrongful gain or wrongful losses, and uh, under this section, if any contravention made, then officer and default is punishable. That is imprisonment not less than six months, which may extend to ten years, and there is a fine also shall not be less than the amount involved in the fraud, but which may extend to three times the amount involved in the fraud. This is really important section. One has to be take care. That any offence should not fall in this 447 because it's a criminal offence, and many many big impact on this. So this one has to be very careful. Any non-compliance should not lead to the fraud. And if CS is part of fraud, and you know any KMP, they are in real trouble. So so far it is non-filing, late filing, and as fine. But I'll put that giving wrong information. May tend amount to fraud, and you will catch hold under four forty seven. So when you file the form, please make a checker of each information. May you may done have by mistake, but you have to justify it is mistake or a fraud, because how you will prove it is mistake. It may turn out that you have done that. Same thing with intention of fraud, then you will be in real different trouble. One has to be very careful. Section four four eight punishment for false statement. Thus, every professional who gives a sign, attest, certified, or written 
report certificate, financial statement, etc. under section, under the act will be punishable under section 447 if the criteria stated in section 448 are attracted. There is a penalty for an officer in default, just like a section 447. That is imprisonment, not less than six months, which may extend to 10 years and a fine uh, for uh, three times. So section here, PCS, any professional, PCS, chatter counter, whatsoever practicing. So where, see here, we are in a problem. The statement may be false, done by the company, given by the company, and you are filing it. So what we do generally, we also prepare it. So then if we give false statement. So here we should have all proper communication in writing for all the information provided for filing the form. So that we can be saved that it is not false, it is true and correct as per the information provided. And we can skip. So that's why one has to be very clear and so far possible not go blindly with the information given because it will be a question that you know you can yourself check apparently this there is a mismatch there is a mistake and that is it shows that you have intentionally given wrong information so it should justify when you say that it is uh, information given and we relied on it one has to apply the mind also because they it's a pile of information given, you have to connect the dots and try to arrive if any wrong or false information is given. So if you don't able to connect the dot yourself also as a professional, you will be held responsible because you are expected to check. You are attesting. Please note that you yourself are only attesting. That means you have to apply the mind and certifying. So we have to be careful and always for forms, French, we should have make a checker, whether it's in a company or in the PCS, because it's a plethora of information. There should not be any mistake, which will put any one professional in a problem. Yeah, please. Not only that, in this particular case, you're you are running multiple uh, risk, actually. One is the action will come under the company side. Number two, there will be a professional misconduct action also can be taken under the company secretary act. Even the companies can file a case on the professional misconduct under the high court. So all these issues are actually coming there. So that is a greater amount of the risk is there, what you are actually saying. It is not simply under the company act. okay, something will happen, we pay penalty, we go for the compounding. That is not the end of the issue. End of the issue is the reputation, the professional misconduct and the negligence these all these issues also come out, so it has to be very careful. Honestly, I say, actually, the form filing and certifying, it is the squeezing of entire knowledge of that entire corporate action, not only the knowledge of the law, knowledge of the facts, applying law to the facts and certifying the company has complied with all the provisions. So, friends, this companies have tendency how much you charge to certify and file the forms i think that should be charged highest you employ cs has to uh, give highest pr price for this forms because it's like entire certification of that entire corporate action and i will say because entire interpretation is also involved because all inter as I was telling, they will say you connect the dots. So that means I have to apply my knowledge and apply the law and then certify it. So it's a highest risk. And many times you don't know what and what this information is created. So one has to be very careful as regards corporate action form. Not yeah, only that, is, if the intentionally fraud is to be committed, if that is the way it is actually going. And I think many of you would have actually seen very latest news, which has actually appeared in the newspaper regarding the Surana Group of Companies case, which has actually come from Chennai. The Surana Group of Companies case, it appears to be they have actually defrauded the money from the bank by taking the bank loan, by producing a lot of documents, etc. And all those things. It was investigated from the serious fraud investigation office. And the matter has actually passed on to the ED. Probably, whatever the reports I have seen, 
probably this is the first time the chennai people have actually arrested under the company side the people surana group of uh, managing director the three other people they were all actually arrested under this actually so that is also there so the certification as you rightly say is calls for good amount of the due diligence checking at your end whether it is correct reasonably it is okay everything is stated there is nothing goes wrong you have to even go beyond and run a check for yourself before you certify that is there, very clear yeah there is a suggestion in chat box to take management representation by mr vijendra vasna yeah i agree but for annual uh, you know audit or kind of form the management will give but for every form management will not give the representation correct the tendency is also not there so we have the what is required is all information in communication and then you connect the dot if you have doubt raise the question in writing and get the clarification in writing and then you go ahead that Because, was my suggestion. yeah if you have done your work due diligently if you have carried out everything reasonably everything is okay in matter relating to certain thing you have taken the management representation then it will actually support you but you cannot take the excuse i have taken the management uh, uh, letter and i have signed it that excuse will not hold good actually you are required yeah. to do your homework you are required to do your due diligence you are required to carry out what is required professionally from your end that is required both well, sure i need comment yeah, uh, an interesting situation i was thinking about uh, wherein uh, uh, the company has Has uh, 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 found some uh, 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 problems which it had faced in 2017 or some some 18 form, and its Swomoto approaches the adjudication officer, the RD passes an order. So in that critical situation, wherein certain certifications are made by PCS, uh, verifying that the contents and that yearly compliances have been met with, wouldn't wouldn't the adjudication officer or the RD also issue a notice and the 448 to the professional as well? I don't know if anybody has encountered such cases. Uh, So basically, a company basically has so much to go on for an application, and uh, it also sees that it has been certified by a practicing company secretary, and action has also been taken against the practicing company secretary under that 448. They are taking. It depends on the severity of the situation. Now 447 is there, then 448 they are attracting. Right. Yeah, they are taking to. In fact, yeah, I, in fact, I have seen. For the practical experience, in some of the cases where the certification was actually involved, show cause notice was issued not only to the company but also the person who is actually certified, that is practicing company secretary, that was there. And that's why I was telling 448 that even the folk they will issue show cause notice, but if you have done your due diligence and kept it, then you are safe. True. Further, I was telling that 447 is not there. But 448 will also happen if you yourself commit a mistake, as I was telling earlier, that there is a mistake. So in that case, the company will say we have not done anything. We have your proper information. The they have not done this properly. So you know that also situation comes. So yeah. if that mistake is very crucial, you offer crucial information which indicate wrong information, then you are in real soup. The so practical is yeah. your matter has happened. in one of the case in a company they were actually appointing a normal director additional director what happened in the resolution some more other because they appointed in another company it is a you know group of company in another company they appointed the independent director the company secretary made a minutes just to copy paste technology instead of additional director he has actually made the preamble to the board is actually considering appointment of the independent director which has happened in the other company He has just copied and pasted. He did not check it, and ultimately the resolution has passed. Resolution was correctly passed as a additional director, but the preamble to that was actually written consideration of the independent director. Inspection took place. When the inspection took place, then what happens is they gone through the things and all. Ultimately, they issued a show cause notice saying that there is a concealment of the information and there is actually misrepresentation of the information. It is actually a criminal complaint. That is what they have done. They filed the criminal complaint against the company, against the the uh, practicing company secretary also. Why practicing company secretary? Because he certified the MGT seven form, etc., 
and other thing and all, all the necessary minutes are maintained properly, this, etc. and other thing and all, yes, sir. Then he went and met the people and all. He said, you are, you are also partied. You are supposed to take, you are not taking it. That is what has happened. Ultimately, company has to go for the costing of the application, the practicing of the has to join with the application. It was a big issue which has actually happened in that company. So it is not that the practicing company. Thank you, Mr. Bala. This was I was talking. See, practically, it's a mistake. Yes. But how do you prove that it is a mistake? This is the situation, and Correct. that's why one has to be very careful. Okay, thank you. Thank you for inputs. Yeah. Um, should I go further? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Section 449 Punishment for False Evidence. If any person intentionally gives any false evidence under any matter of this act, there is a punishment for person who making default under the prescribed section. Punishment is imprisonment not less than three years, which may extend to seven years and fine rupees 10 lakh. Section 450 speaks about punishment where no specific penalty or punishment is provided. If a company or any officer uh, or any other person contravenes any of the provision of this act or rules made there under or any condition, there are both company and officer in default or penalized. In a case of company and officer, penalty of rupees 10,000, where the default continues, penalty may extend to rupees 1,000 for every day till default continues, may extend to rupees 2 lakh in case of company and rupees 50,000 in case of officer in default. Section Most riskiest section, because we tend to think there are no penalties mentioned or nothing is there. Now, you know, unless there is specific penalties there, so, if for entire section pro penalty is provided, then fine. But if not, whether we can cover this, this is a very difficult section because where the penalty is not provided. So, which can be non compliance and which can be covered under this is a risky proposal. One has to be very careful. And the problem is per day penalty. It's a continuing. There is yeah. one question is there. If PCS is certifying form MGT-7, where company has filed all the forms except AOC-4, MGT-7, then PCS must mention non-compliance of the MGT-7? Company has filed any forms. Not they should, not... Read, it should read all forms. I think there's a typing mistake. Company has filed all the forms except AOC-4. I think uh, that is a, that that is a way. Yeah. Except MGT-7, then PCS must mention that. Non compliance has to be mentioned. Yeah. Right for, Correct. Absolutely right. right. Absolutely right. You have to mention the non compliance. Because it does not say that this form, that form, and all the things. All the forms which are required to be is filed, it is a complaint. If nothing is filed, is even some so one form is left out also, it's a non compliance that has to find the place. He is telling late filing of form. No, no, no. Here he says. PC is certifying MGT-7 where company has filed all forms except AOC-4. That is what he said. Yeah, saying. I means what he's telling all forms filed, but they are filed late. Ah. Whether it is non-compliance and same should be referred. No, their file late is not appearing here. So while MGT-7 certification, whether late filing should be referred, that is the basic question. Hmm. The forms is uh, Achha, you are, you are right. You are reading the uh, next one. Late file is the form. Yeah. So You're when right. you are certifying MGT seven, whether late filing of the form should be referred in MGT seven certification. Now give me some time. We'll uh, I'll come back on this. And as regards, uh, there is a question from Mr. Uh, uh, Ma'am, can I add something here uh, regarding yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Certificate. Yeah, uh, so as uh, uh, the question is that uh, while certifying the form, if uh, I have filed some form with a delay or some additional fees, so it is not bound uh, for the practicing CS to mention this, but generally uh, the standard practice is that most of the, in the certificate, they uh, highlight this fact that companies file the forms with a delay or additional fees. Yeah, so Neil, basically there are two options which basically it is upon the understanding between the company and the practicing company sector, usually I'll say that. Uh, one line would say 
say that the company has duly complied with filing of all forms except at of certain few instances or there would be a table uh, attached to that uh, certificate that the, the forms were filed in a complied manner yes and if they are filed within the not within the time frame no so basically there are two options where between the understanding between the pcs and the company you can i think uh, route it through yeah. I have actually, actually seen in uh, some of the listed companies, the secret auditor issues a form, and as you rightly say, in the body of the letter it says the form filing has all taken place, but in some cases there are instances as indicated in the enclosure, the enclosure actually saying the due date, filed when, filed date. That is actually attached. That is what I see. Yeah, why, why we have to do, there should be synchronization in all the certifications. Your secretarial audit, annual compliance, corporate governance, everywhere it will be synchronous. And you have to say because your late filing is there. So late filing, as we concluded earlier, that late filing is not that you are not compliant. It is the convenience. If you see when this late filing fee concept came here and they allowed it, in that it is mentioned that. This late filing is the convenience provided to file the form and go ahead, but it does not tend among that the comp compliance is done. It's still non-compliance. That clarification is given, and of course, we have been given the section also. So it is non-compliance, and that's why we, as a practice, refer that all form file, but they are filed with late file. That kind of. There is someone okay. is asking. What is the basic difference between the compounding of offense and the condemnation of delay? How a person can determine whether the compounding application or condemnation application be made? It is a question of judgment because the question is where you have an opportunity to file the things lately, then you can go for the compounding. You can ask where it cannot be done. You, there is no question of compounding. For example, if you are not filed certain form like MGT 14, it is delayed. Now the question is, option available to you is either you seek a condemnation seeking the authorities to allow you to late file the forms and process the application or admit that you are not filed it and go for the compounding. That is the option available there that you will have to decide. For example, if you are not held the annual general meeting before of 30th September, which you realize later, then the question of Holding the annual general meeting does not arise because date is already gone. So in this case, condonation is not possible. Compounding is only possible because you have to take a call. This depending upon case to case basis. If we cannot give a simple answer how to distinguish between this. where the late filing is possible. Yes, condonation is applicable. Where it is not possible, there is no other code than the compounding. But only case uh, in case of yeah. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if I want to, I mean, I want to add on here, when we are talking about compounding, see, we go for compounding when the company has, uh, like it has been prescribed, why we have to go for compounding. Uh, there are certain offenses which has to mandatorily required to go into compounding. That is, it's like when you have an uh, fine or imprisonment or both. So condonation and compounding difference is coming in here for compounding. It has to be either a fine or an imprisonment or both. Then you are mandatorily required to go in for compounding. When you are talking about condonation, condonation is usually done when we have crossed the time period and we are not able to find uh, file a certain form within that prescribed time peri uh, period. When we are talking about, uh, for example, a MGT 14. So MGT 14 cannot be filed within a period, has to be filed within a period of 300 days. Now, when we are going beyond that period, we are not given a option to refile it. So here, you know what the discussion that we've been uh, having previously, that is, uh, we were talking about non-compliances uh, to be considered or not. So when we were talking about that, uh, basically what I, uh, what I had written is when a form is debarred to be filed. Uh, supposedly, we take DIR 12. DIR 12 can be filed even beyond 300 days. So we take an additional fees for that and we file it. When we talk about MGT 14, that is something which cannot be filed. So we are talking about uh, going into uh, condonation beyond the prescribed time limit. Or so compounding CAG4. is... A CAG 4 also ma cannot be filed beyond 300 days. Correct, correct. So MGT 14 was just an example to quote here. 
so when we talk about certain forms which has been prescribed under the act which cannot be filed beyond a prescribed uh, uh, time period there we go into condonation and when we are talking about compounding it is specifically mentioned it has to be either a fine or imprisonment or both then we are going into the compounding thing so if it is only fine then you can go for uh, condonation right is it that way no 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 ma'am it is basically like it should if it is only fine then we'll have to go for compounding only when we are going beyond a prescribed time limit supposedly mm -hmm. 300 300 days has been prescribed for filing of a certain form and we are not able to file it within that time period when it is crossing that time period we'll have to go for a condonation okay okay i'll put that way that for compounding also you have to first make good the non compliance so to make good non compliance if you can file with late filing fee you will do it but there will be certain forms which you cannot file even with late filing fee then you will ask for condonation of delay absolutely file the form and then go for compounding am i correct oh uh, yes ma'am what we do in compounding is compounding is first we make good the loss and then we go for the compounding uh like uh, in the contrast for condonation in condonation first we'll have to file a condonation form that is in csg1 we'll have to file that after we get an order then we have to go for the filing of that particular form okay so that means where you cannot as you rightly mentioned where you cannot file the form even though you wish because you are across the timeline then you Correct. have to go for compounding yes then whether you go for compounding or not that is your call right yeah compounding whether we go for compounding or not is absolutely the call it is so motto only it is so motto yeah. to be taken by the company mr virendra i hope that things are clear right we can go ahead okay swapnil thanks mr adi section 441 punishment in case of repeated default under this section if a company or any officer commit offence punishable either with fine or imprisonment the very same offence is committed for the second within a period of 3 years both company and officer in default are penalized in a case of company and officer twice the amount of the fine for such offence in addition to any imprisonment provided for that offence section 452 speaks about punishment for wrongfully withholding of property if any officer or employee of a company wrongfully withhold any property of the company there are the punishment for the officer in default which is a fine which shall not be less than rupees 1 lakh but which may extend to rupees 5 lakh on the complaint of the company creditor or member and there is a provision of imprisonment for term which may extend to 2 years section 453 speaks about punishment for improper use of limited or private limited Uh, if any person makes an improper use of the word limited or private limited before incorporation of the company there are a punishment for any person making this default fine which not less than rupees 500 but which may extend to rupees 2000 for every day section 454 adjudication of penalties if company or any officer does not pay the penalty imposed by the adjudicating officer or the regional director within the period of 90 days from the date of the receipt of the copy of the order there is a punishment for any person making this default in the case of a company fine of rupees 25000 but which may extend to rupees 5 lakh in the case of officer fine not less than rupees 25000 but which may extend to 1 lakh rupees or imprisonment up 6 month or both in this section both the punishment is for both uh, in a both manner that is imprisonment and a fine also for a officer in default section 464 prohibition of association or partnership of a person exceeding certain numbers if any number of an association or a partnership or is carried within the person exceeding its prescribed limit there is a penalty for every member of an association or a partnership there is a fine which may extend to rupees 1 lakh and shall also be personal liable for all liabilities incurred in such business uh, that's it the penalty under
companies act now start the penalties under the cblr regulation and one more thing is there in all these issues is the non compliance of the annual return annual financial statement etc for a 3 years consecutively then you know it will fall on the directors i think probably section 164 disqualification of the directors they do the directorship as well that issue is also there it is not only the accounting and the things but they will do the directorship they will be disqualified by the directors then restoring the directorship back it will take a hell of a lot of time they have to wait for the five years period etc they have to apply for the high court or they have to make the good all these issues are also there if they get the disqualified then the company is functioning will come to a standstill they cannot function as a director that is also there yeah there is a penalty uh, sorry fine under cbi regulation act cbi regulation 2015 For this, uh, the fine specified above shall continue till accrued till the time of rectification of the non-compliance to the satisfaction of the concern recognized stock exchange to till the scrip of the listed entity is subsurs suspended from trade trading for non-compliance with aforesaid provision. There is a procedure for penalties. Every recognized stock exchanges shall review the compliance status of the listed entities. And shall issue notices to the non-compliant listed entities within 30 days from the due date of submission of information. Then, non-compliant listed entities shall ensure compliance with the requirement and pay fines as per the circular within 15 days from the date of such notice. If listed entities fails to comply, then stock exchange shall, upon expiry of the period indicated there, notice shall issue. Shall issue notices to the promoter, and then promoter uh, ensure compliance with the requirement and pay fine within a ten days from the date of such notice. While issuing the uh, aforementioned notices, the recognized stock exchange shall also send intimation to other recognized stock exchanges where the shares of non-compliant listed entities are listed. Okay, there is a penalty under Regulation Six. One for non-compliance of appointment of qualified company secretary is a penalty of rupees one thousand for per day. Uh, under Regulation Seven One uh, for appointment of share transfer agent, if a listed entity non-compliant with this section, there is a, also penalty of rupees one thousand rupees per day. Regulation Thirteen One, if company is a failure to ensure the expeditious of redressal of investor complaints. Then Regulation Thirteen Three, there is a statement on shareholder complaints. If a company not submit this statement, then also there is a fine of rupees one thousand rupees per day. Then Regulation Thirty Two One speaks about the deviation and variation in utilization of share proceeds. If company fails to provide this information to stock exchange, then also the fine of rupees one thousand rupees per day. Then Regulation Seventeen One A. For appointment of uh, continuation of non-executive director who is has attending the age of seventy-five years, there is a penalty. If a listed entity non-compliant with this regulation, there is a penalty of rupees two thousand rupees per day. Under Regulation Eight One, uh, which is for constitution of audit committee, if a listed entity not constitute an audit uh, committee, then there is a fine of rupees two thousand rupees per day. Under Regulation Nine One and Nine, no, sorry, Nineteen One and Ninety Two, the constitution of NRC committee. Uh, if a company fails to constitute a com, uh, NRC committee, then it will be there is a fine of rupees two thousand rupees per day. And then Regulation Twenty Two and Twenty, uh, sorry, Twenty Sub Twenty Two and Two A, or a constitution of SRC committee. If a listed entity uh, not complied with this regulation. Then also there is a fine of rupees two thousand rupees per day. Uh, regulation twenty seven two, which is uh, speaks about the corporate governance compliance report, which is uh, provided within a specified time. If a listed entity uh, non compliant with this uh, regulation, then also there is a fine of rupees two thousand per day. Regulation twenty four a speaks about submission of secretary compliance report. If listed entity non compliant with this regulation. Then also fine of rupees two thousand per day. Regulation thirty one speaks about shareholder pattern. If a listed entity not submitted within the period prescribed uh, time, 
to the stock exchange there there is a fine of rupees 2000 rupees per day regulation 34 speaks about annual report if listed entity uh, non compliant with this regulation then also fine of rupees 2000 rupees per day uh, there is a fine of rupees 5000 rupees per day under the regulation 171 for a non compliance of composition of the board including to failure to appoint woman director there is a fine of rupees 5000 per day and regulation 29 Uh, which speaks about disclosure of a related parallel transaction on consolidated basis there is a fine of rupees 5000 rupees per day the regulation 31a 3a for non compliance of reclassification of application to stock exchange or there is a delay in the submission there is a fine of rupees 5000 rupees per day uh, under regulation 33 uh, for submission of financial result within a period of prescribed time if a company fails to uh, if a company not compliant with this regulation then there is also fine of rupees 5000 rupees per day yeah uh, sorry to interrupt swapnil i think there is one question from virendra ji what is the redressal mechanism in case of unintentional delay of compliance in case of sebi lodr so virendra ji basically uh, uh, yes uh, if the you, if you have not filed in within that timeline a penalty is inflicted Uh, a notice is issued by bsc nsc but also there is a redressal mechanism of that they have uh, framed a policy per se uh, which 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 is a policy of exemption of fines basically so if you have certain exceptional uh, 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 reasons which are fitting into that uh, policy basically uh, which have been mentioned like act of god and actual calamity uh, there is some restrictions from the government per se or uh, 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 basically for example say the government has to appoint a nominee on your board and you, the company if that government has not nominated uh, uh, the proper director on its board then you cannot be held liable secondly when there is some seizure uh, seizure of records from income tax or regulatory bodies and you, you are not able to uh, suffice uh, su sufficient information so there are certain uh, cases which they have jotted down in their uh, uh, waiver list so the internal committee that is the bsc or the nsc waiver committee looks into that uh, authenticity of that particular matter and then accordingly uh, uh, decides a waiver uh, in this particular matter so i hope uh, virendra ji uh, uh, you your answer is uh, properly uh, thank you thank you thanks a lot you are absolutely right actually because as you rightly said they have the standard operating procedure where you said correctly the various criteria are actually mentioned that means you know once you make the compliance good non compliance in the compliance generally you can go for the retrocession that is the case same with the company site and sebi and odr also once the compliance is done you can learn to apply the mechanism and you learn to state if those things are all fitting within that criteria if it is really you can prove that it has happened beyond the circumstances etc and other thing and all yes waiver but by and large waiver is not done generally but they reduce the penalty to the bare minimum and they tell you that's what is happened exceptional cases as you rightly say government has nominated etc and other thing and all in such cases waiver is also being done that is it uh, another important thing for the forum basically if you get such notices uh, and if you have certain uh, un, uh, uh, have some cases which are falling under the exemptions criteria 15 days is the uh, is the window period wherein which you you need to inform uh, the exchanges about uh, by the holding reply that these are the situation by which we would no one able to uh, justify these uh, filings so uh, that was to be added in there's one more question is there from which period penalty under section 61 starts i think 61 means uh, are you talking about the appointment of the company secretary or something so basically deal with the appointment of company secretary and compliance officer which the lodr specifically men, uh, mandates you need to have a company secretary and a, a compliance officer and as far as the companies act is concerned it's a six months period yeah. uh, so basically this is a very tricky situation wherein the companies act says you have a six months period and the lodr says something else and you would be uh, literally penalized in under both these acts so uh, yes people do face uh, uh, similar situations in this 61 and that 203 criteria of appointing these company secretaries so under lodr you are non compliant do under companies act you are compliant no but the problem is here uh, these are two different regulation one is actually by the act by which you are incorporated in the company other is actually by contractual obligation you have entered the leasing agreement 
So although you are the six months, you are not compliant in complete cycle, you are not compliant in the LODR regulation, I think you have to pay the penalty. I don't think they'll agree. Would I go further? I think there are, I let, let us see any more questions are appearing there. What is the red vessel mechanism is already answered. And uh, is there any timeline to get a reply from the red vessel committee on the exchange by applying for waiver of the application? Basically, uh, uh, one more thing to add in. If you don't have a, if your company secretary says, suppose has resigned, uh, you need to make somebody as the compliance officer, either your CFO or the director for the interim period, uh, so as to uh, not violate that LODR per se. And then you uh, uh, have that uh, process of uh, onboarding the another company secretary during that interim phase, basically. You are absolutely right. I have seen some of the companies like that only because what they have done is they have the CFO as a complaint officer. The woman company secretary is resigned. They have put up that CFO will act as a compliance officer during the such time the company secretary is deputy. You are right. Uh, Balasa, I would just want to add in here. Uh, so when we are talking about a listed entity, obviously it is like for following the provisions that is there uh, in SEBI. Yeah. So when when we have provisions uh, to compare with companies at an LODR, obviously for a listed company, we go with the stricter provisions. So yeah. there, uh, yeah. So here, even though the time, uh, the time for appointment varies in both the uh, places, we would obviously go for the one which is stricter in nature. Because LODR, of course, is uh, applicable only to the listed entities. So we would be for listed entities, of course, we follow the LODR, the SEBI LODR for the purpose of audit also. You are absolutely right. Because so for it will be non-compliance and uh, it will be yeah. mentioned. Uh, yes, it will be a non-compliance only because LODR, when we are talking about listed entities, it is only LODR that we follow, SEBI yeah. guidelines. Yeah, you are right. So absolutely. it would be a non-compliance only. Yeah, you are absolutely right. As uh, Mr. Shah was telling, if the company secretary resigns today, what happens? I become a non compliant not having a compliance survey effective from tomorrow. Right. But uh, appointment, of the company, app appoint appointment, of the, yeah, appointment of the company secretary is definitely going to take at least a month or so because I need to find out, recruit, and other thing at all. That is why the via media is you immediately appoint a CFO as a compliance officer. Till such time, company secretary is appointed so that the non-compliance is taken care of. That is what many companies are doing it also. And then there is the question, is there any timeline to get a reply from redressal committee of exchange by applying for waiver application? Waiver application for what? That is reducing the fees. Yeah. Penalty. Penalty. That is after complying it to making a thing, you know, it has happened beyond uh, control within fitting the criteria, etc. Once you make an application, the time period is there by which it will be resolved. That's a question. So yes. person, they, they haven't specified in that, in that policy and they don't want to be bound by any timelines per se. So... Oh, right, <laughs> Yeah, if uh, I can so add, I would also I like to here. give one more yeah. example here. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the uh, discussion that we are currently doing about the waiver application. So we, during a course of audit also, we came across a listed company with voice is breaking. Women director. Uh, so they yeah, you know, voice you know? can you repeat the sentence, please? Yeah, voice uh, yeah so this is uh, basically uh, regarding an audit that we have done of a listed company. So they had failed to appoint a women director within the prescribed time. So they were charged with a penalty from the uh, stock exchange, but then uh, we even filed this waiver application and then uh, giving the reasons as to why we were not able to comply with it in the specific time period. So there are situations where these penalties are also waived off by the stock exchanges, not necessarily that we are bound to pay the penalty, but if we do have a proper reason to state that this is the reason because of which we could not appoint the because the company has specifically shown all the uh, procedure that they had followed, but they had not found the right candidate. So they had uh, been imposed with a certain amount of penalty and then later on it was also waived off <coughs> by uh, the stock exchange. True, true. Very true, Aditi. Yeah, if yeah. I can add uh, one thing here. Yeah, yeah please. Yes, yeah. please. So basically when it comes to timeline of the exchanges to you know reply to the redressal uh, applications, 
so basically it does happen that you know it depends upon the number of you know applications they have like you know during covid time they had number of you know applications and the reply used to come you know after 6 months or 8 months and they used right. to you know convey also but nowadays you know if you go i mean within a month you know probably you'll yeah. get you know an uh, a reply to this and you know this is how you know it operates now yeah thanks yeah and of course need a little follow up on our part also <laughs> yes that's needed <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> thanks mr virendra yeah. thank uh, you one more thing ma'am i would like to add yeah please yes yes go ahead uh it is now the bsc is also sending mails to all the companies who have uh, filed a waiver application okay they need to follow up prescribed format they have to literally apply pay fees for applying to bsc for waiver application that is a minimum fee of 10000 rupees prescribed so you have to apply that way and they have also listed out the th- uh, points okay in this situation you won't be able to get a waiver of your fees so oh. again uh, you have to identify the situation the uh, one of the important situation is ke if you are not able to find the right candidate you cannot apply for waiver that is your responsibility to find the right candidate oh okay <laughs> this way also it becomes very difficult for waiver applications to go through Okay. okay. Very true. Yes, unavoidability is not a reason. Basically, which they are uh, looking at. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Aditi Alifia. Yeah. Thanks. They both are our partners. Thanks, both of you. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Something. Under this, uh, we can discuss in slide that is a fine of rupees ten thousand per instance of non-compliance per per item. There is a regulation 29.2 and 29.3. It is a delay in furnishing prior intimation about the meeting of the board of director. Under regulation 42, 2, 3, 4, 5, delay in non or non disclosure of a record date or a dividend declaration or non compliance with the ensuring the prescribed time gap between two record dates or book closure date. Under regulation 17.2, non compliance with the requirement. pertaining to the number of board meeting there is a penalty sorry fine of rupees 10000 per instance of a non compliance per item in a regulation 72a that is a pertaining to quorum of the board meeting if company fails to comply this regulation then the penalty of rupees 10000 per per instance of a non compliance per per item regulation 443 for Uh, non submitting the voting result within the provided in the period of provided under this regulation and then regulation 46 that is speaks about functional of website there is a non compliance of for this regulation also there is a fine of rupees 10000 for instance of non compliance for per item there is one question is actually asked here i think they are seeking some information i believe what they are saying one more now nsc is asking about the details about the audited report field like uh, trade receivable details and the party trade payable details of the party and anyone is getting this kind of the observation from nsc i think only participants can answer because the question is thrown to the participant anybody is getting this sort of a letter from nsc anybody yes open it uh mr shah you have any idea on this no ideally if i would request dilip ji if you can elaborate more on what exactly uh, did he file and what exactly uh, uh, was wanted by uh, in which regards it was wanted by the nsc because uh, this seems to be a very short para so i'm not able to make it out dilip yeah. you are there actually on uh, it is for specific purpose rightly both is said dilip you are there can we hear from you dilip I think I don't know. Okay. We'll take it later. Yeah, okay. Swapnil, go ahead. Okay. There is a fine of rupees twenty-five thousand for per instance. Under Regulation forty-three A, that is a non-disclosure of dividend distribution policy in annual report, and on the website of the entity, this is this regulation is for the top thousand listed companies based on the market capitalization. As on the thirty-first March of every year, 
and regulation 44 sub uh, regulation 44 5 for non convening annual general meeting within a period of 5 months from the close of financial year this is also applicable to top 1000 listed companies based on market capitalization as on 31st march of every year and regulation 453 speaks about approval of stock exchanges before filing request for change of a name if listed company non compliant this regulation there is a fine of rupees 25000 for per instances as the one more information is actually provided nowadays exchanges raise the penalties under sop for the same time i think it's only for the information i think okay go ahead and also there is one correction i think uh, there used to be earlier you know requirement of taking in principal approval for change of name but that is no longer required you can directly you know apply for change of name and then in the previous uh, slide swapnil yeah in 453 if you see so there is uh, there is a amendment so no need to you know go for uh, stock exchanges approval you know uh, prior okay thanks for your attention yeah thanks thanks thank you thanks uh, there is a question by tejashri how can we say it as non compliance whether a typing mistake at the time of filing any quarter and submissions is considered as non compliance i uh, i don't know you are referring to my mentioning typing mistake i was telling that typing mistake is there but how you prove that it is a typing mistake once the mistake is done and wrong information has gone and on that that is out in a public how you prove it is mistake or you are not done intentionally that is the main challenge i was talking about that no doubt there can be mistake but you know it depends which kind yeah please mr dilip you can but let me complete this they uh, so they just see i was talking that that it happens that mistake happen but if that mistake is of such a nature which has a very big impact of submitting some wrong information to public or to government or any outsider then it will be very difficult to prove that as a mistake so it depends on the facts that i was referring yeah mr dilip please in fact in your company you must have you know what we call a policy of maker checker so you know somebody who acts uh, make the things there is another person who has to doubly check to before it is released in order to avoid these things so many companies they have this policy what you call maker checker policy even in many company when they are having a group of companies there there are various company as i was telling you the cut paste minutes what they do is a person makes a minutes a company secretary makes a minute that is actually run through by the another company secretary in the same group and they verify it so that everything is factually correct i think probably that sort of the mechanism should be in place uh, in order to safeguard the interest that's what i would put it yeah mr dilip please you can unmute and say yes yeah, dilip you want to say something yeah mr dilip please unmute and say there is some problem he has written but he is not able to say hmm. okay and one more thing tejashree i think uh, when there is a, a, a error basically in say suppose if for example a shareholding pattern or corporate governance and you are filed in within that time frame and you come to know whether when, when there is a error which has gone in there is always chance of a rectification in that file basically But simultaneously if there is something wrong gone it goes to the exchange exchange also comes back to you by an email rectifying that proper error if that is being made into and it can be properly rectified so i don't see any uh, penalty be imposed for such uh, instances basically because you are rectifying your mistake and you are properly disclosing it uh, after uh, say when it has come to your notice yeah swapnil you can go ahead i think mr dilip has some issue in uh, unmute yeah just yes, uh, there is a fine of rupees 50000 or per instances under regulation 28a or a obtaining in principal approval of stock exchange before issuing of securities if there is a non compliance under this regulation there is a penalty of rupees 50000 for per instances uh, that is when there is a completion of uh, fines under the sebi regulation then there is in an in eligibility of a director if prosecuted 
under section 164 of companies act 2013 lays down the ground upon which director may address disqualification that is where insolvency has been applied for but the application still stand pending second where there is an offence involving moral turpitude that he or she has been convicted of and sentenced with imprisonment for a period of not less than 6 months third any court or tribunal has passed an order that disqualify him from being appointed as a director or at any time during the final proceeding for years he or she has been convicted of an offence involving related party transaction which are governed under section 188 of the companies act 2013 if if a person has been convicted of any offence and sentenced in respect thereof to imprisonment for a period of 7 years or more he shall not be liable sorry not be eligible to be appointed as a director in any company fixed with regard to this particular provision non eligibility for director will be for the period of 5 years from the date of such default be it in that particular company or any other company there is a question is there is it mandatory for the sme listed company to constitute the stakeholder relationship committee even it has less than 1000 shares i think uh, as on today i don't know i have idea we'll come back to you i'll come back to you on this i think we need to check it sme listing yes Okay, uh, Alifia. Thanks. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, Alifia, our partner. Yeah, Alifia has given our partner that regular are not applicable. So Sorry? Alifia, it is not uh, applicable, so they are not to constitute. You can unmute Alifia. Uh, yes, ma'am. Since the regulations are not applicable to SME listed okay. companies, yeah. So they need not follow that. Okay. Good. Okay. In good information. Thank you. Thank you. Right, right. Yes, sir. Yes. Now there is a case law. If I just like to mention something, if a company files sue motor petition for compounding, then authority take a lenient view. If there is a genuine reason or a non-compliance or circumstances is out of control. Uh, the case, the there is a case about the director who. Are the more than who are the director in the more than twenty private limited companies? As on the thirty first March two thousand fifteen, it was required to vacate office of the director at least one of the companies out of twenty on or before thirty first March two thousand fifteen. He sent his resignation to one of company out of twenty companies, and the company uh, file uh, files its uh, resignation to ROC. They are well formed. In 10th February 2016, then ROC West Bengal sent show cause notice for asking him why prosecution under Section 165.1 read with Section 165.3 of the Companies Act 2013. There, uh, director has accepted his his guilt and admitted. Then director sent representation to register with a request to compound of an offence as provided under Section 441 Subsection 1 of the Companies Act. There is a director prayed for the leniency on the grounds that it was his first offence. Then there is a provision uh, according to Companies Act 2030, as per Section 165, number of directorship that under in Subsection 1, no person after the commencement of this Act shall hold office as a director, including any alternate directorship in more than 20 companies at the same time, provided that. the maximum number of public companies in which a person can be appointed as a director shall not exceed 10 explanation for this for weakening the limit of public companies in which a person can be appointed as a director uh, director or directorship in a private companies that are either holding or subsidiary company of a public company shall be included a sub section 6 6 speaks about that if a person accept an appointment as a director In a contravention of such section one, he shall be punishable with a fine which shall not be less than five thousand rupees, but which may extend to twenty five thousand rupees for every day 
after the purge during which the controversy continues. There is observation. Director was holding the directorship more than 20 companies till 31st March 2015. He tendered his resignation as a director by one of the companies as on Hello. 19 December 2015. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Hello. Ma'am, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. I have changed my headphone about my query. So I'm so sorry the, for this. Now my query is, query is related to what NSC is asking nowadays, uh, asking about the financial data, what we have submitted, audited, signed copy. Now they are asking about trade receivable, trade papers, which are said, okay. And what are the outstanding, what are the, you know, outstanding borrowing from which bank, all the detail they are asking about this. But they are not asking about the penalties and any fine. They are just uh, doing mail and they're asking the this. Uh, these are the data, and I think this is a very confidential data from the competition point of view. So, uh, do you think we have to uh, give this information to the yeah. staff? Wow. Yeah. Penalty. Yeah. Penalty. Yeah. Penalty. Yeah. Since that exchange has asked for certain information, you need to give a reply. It goes without saying, uh, uh, Dilip ji. Uh, but I think uh, it's uh, never heard of. Uh, it might be certain things which might have been figured out by NSC because of this. Uh, it might have uh, triggered this situation. But yes, you need to file the holding reply any which ways. Yes, we have provided the data, but uh, what they are asking about the current year, uh, 2021 and 2022, they're asking about the fixed say, trade receivable, name of the party, a pan card and all. I think, I don't think we have to give this much information, which is very, this is very, com uh, very confidential and uh, stock exchange must, uh, must assure us that this will be put in very confidential. This will not be, you know, shared with the comp competitor company. I asked to the officer uh, of NSE, uh, what will you do with this information? They are. They said uh, we are asking about. Uh, this is for the information only. This is there is no such kind of panel provision and and all. But I asked uh, uh, what is the guarantee for the confidentiality. So they said this will be very confidential. This this is assurance from our side. But uh, uh, they are doing just uh, mail and asking about the data and uh, providing the date on or before we have to pro provide the detail uh, to that officer. So uh, what do you think? I think I think from last four years they are asking about from last four years now current year. So uh, I'm thinking that something is not good uh, as per my opinion. Uh, no, so Dilip ji, it, it moves on from situation to situation. I've seen getting emails from BSC NSC to people about uh, updation of their policies, basically related party policies. Says may, many amendments have come in. Uh, there's a review process which has been mentioned. The LODR people are not reviewing it uh, every three years. So basically, when then there's a monitoring mechanism set up by the exchanges, they would always come back to you for certain information to for a validation uh, that you have validated it, and then it would come to you for further this thing. So I think uh, it's a process which needs to be followed into. Okay, so there is not no kind of a fine and on panel. This is just for information, for their information only. Yeah, I, and you know, they don't, they have cherry picked and given. Not everyone is getting. So there is some reason they are asking. So you are yourself also check why they are asking. There is, right. They are trying to come to some uh, doubt. They are clarifying their doubt in your case. So just mm. check that. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. And uh, you yeah. know, in this public office, uh, they doing that kind of sharing information, they will be in a problem. They know that. They are already in problem. They will not do that. Okay. Ma'am, if I could add one. Uh, yeah. Basically, please. sometimes it may happen that, you know, when we you have applied for waiver application or, you know, there is a penalty, you know, uh, uh, you know, levied. And so many facts, you know, you mention in the application. So, the exchanges, you know, some sometimes, you know, come other way, giving reference to your annual report and some details, and they cross verify the data you have, you know, mentioned in your waiver application. And basis that they decide upon, you know, the fate of such application, and they, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, either accept your waiver application or, you know, based on that, they reject your application also. Agree, but uh, in my case, there is no such kind of waiver. They are just randomly asking, not, uh, yeah, not that kind so of I think so that, you know, your balance sheet or something they may on a test check has picked up or something. I think so. Otherwise, they don't ask. So there is something in their mind. Because uh, we have come with the IPO on February 2018 and ah. they asked us, they asked us, 
from that now you got uh, it. after the ipo they are asking about this detail right, now you got the you got the answer only mr virendra <laughs> no you also got the answer <laughs> uh-huh. yeah uh, what was that <laughs> after ipo this is the random pregnant this is the yeah, where is the practice. utilization of fund that report will be there so that's why they are asking fixed asset no problem why are they kidna liya director ne kidna liya whether that money okay. went to the purpose they, they are just counter checking it The okay. money has been raised for the rightful purposes, you and it is utilized. That is what they are indirectly checking it. That's what. Yeah, you, you must okay. have written that uh, where it is utilized. You know, standard thing. But they have certain maybe some grape pine or something, something. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, got, yeah. I got the point. Also, right. correlated with your uh, th- regulation thirty-two, what information you filed in, so that you don't fall in trouble. Basically, you give the information what is uh, crisp required by them. Okay, statement of deviation utilization of the fund IPO, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. I got the uh, whole okay. scenario right okay, now. <laughs> okay, okay. Good. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Virendra, I think you have raised the question. Do you have any billing provisions either under Companies Act or SEBI law for applying extension of time as one may realize the due date is approaching and it may not be able to meet the deadline? Would it be right to approach the authority before and whether this is allowed apart from AGM extension timeline? My dear, otherwise you will not wait for the government. Everyone will say, "Oh, I will not able to file. Give me extension." Not at all. Nothing doing. Even though we are not able to do, run against the time and do it. That's all. Yeah, sorry. Except panel, uh, I have myself only answered. Sorry, before asking the panel. No issue, madam. You are okay. you are always welcome. You are a expert actually in the field. Okay, Swapnil, go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, there is a observation. The director tender his resignation uh, on nineteen December two thousand fifteen, and the intimation was sent to the registrar in a form day after twelve on ten February two thousand sixteen. There was a delay of two hundred and seventy days. So there is observation that there he is a director. In that more than twenty private companies for a period of two hundred and seventy-two days, so director prayed for leniency on the ground that it was the first offence and the prayer was considered and accepted. The decision of the case, the offence under section one sixty-five one, read with section one sixty-five three, punishable under section one sixty-five six of the Companies Act two thousand thirteen, stand compounded as against the director. Provided he pays compounding fees of rupees fifty thousand within two weeks from the date of order. Second case of being global spirit for N Y India Private Limited. There is a fact uh, there in the provision of the section two zero three subsection four of the Company Act two thousand thirty. The office of uh, old time key manager person is vacated, and which resulted vacancy shall be filled by the board within a period of. Six months from the date of vacancy, the company files suit or application for adjudication of penalty under Section 454 of Companies Act 2030. The company secretary of company had resigned from his office from 28 February 2019. It shall appoint a company secretary of the company with effective from 27 November 2019 with delay of 91 days. Thereby. Violation of the provision of subsection four of the section two zero three of Companies Act and rule made there under the company further prayed the delay in uh, complying with the provision of section two zero three of the Companies Act two thousand thirty be condoned or any other relief or reliefs may deem fit be granted. There is a provision of section two zero three subsection four of the Companies Act provide. Uh, so, Abhinav, I want provision because we are already over the time. Okay. Give observation and state. Observation. Um, the company and its officer did not comply the provision of the section two zero three, subsection one, read with subsection four of the Companies Act for non-appointment of full-time company secretary. Hence, the concerned director and the company are liable for penalties under section two zero three, subsection five of the Companies Act. There is a decision of the adjudicating authority. Which is a pass that order contravention of section two zero three of Companies Act, considering considering the facts and provision mentioned, adjudicating authority for sharing imposed the following penalty for the company as well as officer in default. The number of days of the default is ninety one. 
and penalty of company of rupees 5 lakh and penalty on a director that is a there is a five directors and consolidated is 6 lakh 68000 and that's from my side just to add in a few more words basically uh, regulation 30 basically of the sebi lodr uh, is also very crucial uh, this thing uh, no penalties have been prescribed per se it is a sebi subject matter where in the internal committee would come back to you on the filings and the disclosures made by you and accordingly uh, a penalty is decided by the adjudication officer under the scra act so uh, if you if you happen to read the news uh, a month and a half or uh, say uh, uh, in i think uh, april or may uh, uh, a reliance facebook deal basically certain disclosures were not uh, made in time manner timely manner under regulation 30 that is what sebi said uh, there was certain uh, also replies given by the company secretaries to uh, the sebi but eventually a penalty was laid down for uh, almost like a 30 lakh on all the companies and the company secretaries per se so this regulation 30 is a very uh, uh, need the letter needs to be very meticulously drafted when there is any corporate action going on in your company uh, so that you don't face these nuances thereafter okay thanks thanks mr bautas for your input uh, hello ma'am yes, please yeah 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 please ma'am i would like to extend my gratitude and vote of thanks toward Gupti ma'am, Ms. Yu, and Bala sir, and Bupen sir, and also Ashwini ma'am, Gauri ma'am, and Jayita ma'am, and also Nikhil, Kavya, and Akash, and last but not the least, Mr. Chetan. Thank you, ma'am. So, okay, you have done an excellent job in summarizing everything and putting it together. You have brought up this uh, topic is really, really very excellent. Many new things. everybody could learn actually in the process there are a lot of things has come but ultimately only one thing is there we need to be vigilant whether it is the employee employee company secretary or the practicing company secretary and we need to do our homework we need to do the due diligence we need to do the right things always the right time that is one thing fine and penalty will happen depending upon the location different roc different nclts etc somewhere it will be more somewhere it will be less but as you rightly says the moment the non compliance is realized it is better to go either for the condemnation or go for the compounding applications so moto so that what happens is at least in many cases it is seen the penalty which is levied is much lesser that is what it is so we should always do the right thing that is what it is required that is basically the professional has to take a view we will try to do the thing right that to also doing the thing first time right that is what i would say Thanks a lot to everybody. Thanks, Thanks a lot for the active participation. Thank you, thank you, madam. Thanks, thank 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 Mr. Balasa. Good job, Swapnil. Thank and you. thank you to participants for a patient hearing. <laughs> and all participants will be sharing the PPT on the mail ID registers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank Good day.